This tutorial is going to help you create Dreamweaver Project 5. In this project, we're going to learn a couple of things about making images clickable. So the different areas of the image, for instance, I have a map of Ohio here, and when I click on the different areas, either the orange, the yellow, the light green, the dark green, or the purple, it will take me to a different web page each time. So if I click on the dark green, that's the unglaciated Appalachian Plateau in Ohio. When I click over here, it's the Central Lowland Till Plains. So we're going to learn how to make these into little hot spots that will take us to different sites. In addition, I've added on to this project some CSS that actually styles this so that the middle of the page is where the content will sit. So if I expand this out to almost full screen, the content is in the vertical and horizontal center of the page. All right. In addition to this, we're going to be creating a site rather than just a web page. So uh, I'm going to show you how to walk through that. It's going to be simple. It's going to contain two things. It's going to create a file called Ohio Regions. That'll be the name of our HTML page and a picture that you can get from our website that contains the regions and that was the picture of the map that you just saw. So uh, I'm going to rename this one so I don't lose it. And when you create the site, you're just going to drop this picture file. This is that map. So save it into your directory. All right, so in Dreamweaver, we're going to go to the Site menu, and we're going to click New Site. And we're going to call this Ohio Regions. And I'm just going to copy that. And you save it to your H drive. So this will be your H drive. And then we're going to be making a folder called Ohio Regions. Then click Save. So down in the lower right hand corner, we now have a site folder. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to show you how to put that uh, picture in there. So once you have your picture downloaded and saved, um, just copy that into the Ohio Regions folder. So I'm going to paste it right in there. And then down in your Explorer, hit Refresh. And there it is. So I now have my picture in my folder. It's the only thing there. So now let's create our web page. I'm going to click HTML, and I'm immediately going to save it. So I'm going to click File, Save As, and I'm going to have a Ohio Regions HTML page. All right, so that created this one. So let's give this page a title. We'll call it Regions of Ohio. We're also going to give a heading on the page, The Regions of Ohio. And then we also have to give some instructions to the person visiting this page. We'll say, um, below is the map of the regions of Ohio. Click on a region in the map to learn more about it. I'll make that an exclamation point. All right, below is where we're going to insert that image. Now, we could always go to the Insert menu and click Image, but I want to show you a different method from what we've already done. So there's always going to be multiple ways to do something. Now that we have this isn't in a site, we can actually just drag and drop it to the window. So I just literally grabbed it and I'm going to put it in, in this space below the instructions. So the alternate text I'm going to put as Ohio map and there it is. And we're going to style up the rest of this later. But for now, let's make this map clickable. So it's going to be a little bit easier if we can make this map bigger. So I'm going to click on the view menu and I'm going to click magnification. Magnification is at 100% right now, so this is the same size that most people are going to see it in, unless they have their browser settings turned down or up. I'm going to make this 200%. So now the map is going to be way easier for us to click on. Next, I'm going to need a browser window that has the regions of Ohio in it. 
and I'm going to be using the governor's office, which I'll go ahead and post this site to our classroom so you can get the same links. But I'm going to copy um, each one of these links. So for instance, let's start with, actually I'm going to start with something easy. I'm going to start with, yeah, the till planes. So first of all, let me copy the address. And then just to show you how to do this, I'm going to start with this corner up here. And I'm going to select the image. So I know the image is selected because I can see the border of it. And now I'm going to click this polygon icon in the lower left in the properties panel. And now I can place points in here. So I'm going to find a place in the map. And I'll start in the, lower, in the upper left-hand corner. Then it's going to say, describe the image map in the alt field of the properties inspector. That's basically asking, hey, put a name in the alt tag of what this link is going to go to. Then I'm basically going to be drawing a triangle for this corner. So I'm going to put another uh, dot here and another dot down here. And that allows me to say this area of the page is now clickable. I'm going to hit my escape key and now I'm going to paste in that link in the link box. So I'm just going to type right over top of this pound key and then paste that in. Now just to make sure I'm going to hit the home key and yes I do have an HTTP colon slash slash in there. That's going to be important. Uh, that will open up, uh, that basically means this is not something in this site. It's going to be a site away from this site. And just to leave our current window open and open up a new tab or a new window altogether, I'm going to select underscore blank. So target underscore blank means open up a new window. And the alternate text is something I'm going to copy off of this site. So the central lowland till planes is what that little square is going to be referencing. So in the alternate text in the properties panel, I'm going to paste that in there. Now I'm going to repeat this process around the page, and that's going to be a little time consuming, but I'm going to show you how to do touch-ups as well. So we don't have to be real precise, but these lines will move in a straight line fashion unless we add more of them. So let me give you an example. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit and we're going to do, we might as well do this yellow one next. So let's do that. I'm going to click hotspot. Or actually, I'm going to click the map so that I'm starting a new hotspot. So this is now unselected. And I'm going to click the polygon selector. And I do not want my new image maps to overlap. I definitely want to have some, a little bit of a gap in between these two so that the person clicking doesn't accidentally click the wrong thing. I'm, so I'm helping out the end user. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here. It's going to give me that same message. And I'm going to go all the way down here and create a straight line. Again, I do want a little bit of division here. And then I'm going to click down here. Notice how this begins to widen up. Sometimes it's going to overlap, and that's fine. But basically, we want to trace the boundary line of this yellow part of the map all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go about halfway, and each bend is generally a good spot to go ahead and start adding these points. And later on, I'm going to show you how that you can tweak that a li little further and help these out once you have them all laid out. So they are adjustable if you do uh, happen to put one in the wrong place. Now here's a good example of all of this is overlapping because it's connecting back. It's like a big lasso. So we really want to come back this way. So I'm going to go along the lake shore here. Okay, and if there was any that I really wanted to move up, 
I'm going to hit my escape key, and perhaps I will tighten this just a tad just to demonstrate, but I can adjust each one of these to be a little bit closer. And maybe this one is too far in. And the rest of it looks pretty good. Maybe this one will come out a little bit more. So I can just grab the square and adjust it if necessary. All right, so now that we have this region, let's find out what that should go to. So this is called the Huron Erie Lake Plain. Let me go ahead and copy that link for people that want to find out more about it. I believe this was an ancient lake at one, ta at one time called Lake Maumee. So uh, let's go ahead and put this in the link field in the property inspector. Again, I want to make sure that HTTP is in there, and I also want to change the target to blank. And let's copy that title. I'm using Control C to copy, and then I'm just going to put in the alternate text the title of that page. So when I float my mouse over top, it should say the name of that page of where I'm heading to. Okay, now we have to repeat that down for these last couple of spots. So I'm going to go ahead and begin over here. Oops. Again, it's important that you do not have this selected. So hit your escape key and then select the map before you do the polygon. So here we go. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go all the way down this edge. And then at each turn, I'm going to add a point and let it make the straight line connections. I probably went a little too far, so later on I'll adjust this up, but it's going to go to here. Okay, and I'm going to then touch up these and keep going, but through the magic of video editing, I'm going to basically fast forward this process. So uh, in a moment, you'll see my complete map. Okay, it looks like that we've got everything filled in at this point. So uh, now I'm going to reduce that magnification of the page back to 100% and this is what we have. So let me just double check that down here I have a link, a new window target, and the alt tag. And the same thing is true for each one of these. Link, target, alt tag. Link, target, alt tag. Oh, this one is missing. This one is there. But this one is the same as the bottom one, so I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to copy, paste this here, target is blank and then this upper left corner alt tag will be the same all right and then I'm gonna save it control s is a quick way to save all right the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna start styling this so in the regions of Ohio, that's a heading. So I'm going to change this from paragraph to heading one. And this is a paragraph, so we're going to leave that alone. And I'm going to select the body tag. And the body tag is what we're going to put all of our styles into. Because we really don't have a whole lot of content here. Under normal circumstances, we would want to perhaps make a style for the paragraph or for... Uh, the H1, or maybe even the image itself. But since this is really only has like three elements on this page, we're going to do it all at once. So I'm going to select this body tag, and I'm going to create a new rule. I want to select the tag, redefines an HTML tag element, and click OK. All right, so I'm going to make the text Verdana, which again is a sans serif. The other day we 
did Tahoma, which is also a sans serif, but this one's a little bit different. It's one of my favorites, actually. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to align the text to center. So that's actually over on the block category, and it's going to be just text align center. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually treat the body tag as a table. So I'm going to say table right here. All right, so the display of the body will be as if it was a table. Okay, uh, next I'm going to go down to the uh, box category, and we're going to treat the margin as a zero top margin. I have to uncheck this box. I'm going to set the right value, so the right side and the left side are going to be automatic. And then the bottom I'm going to leave as zero. All right, um, next for the padding, I'm going to make the padding. Uh, and just so that you understand the math here, I need to account for all four edges. I want it to be in the middle of the screen, so that's basically 50% on the vertical axis and 50% on the uh, horizontal axis. But since there's four edges, I really have to divide that by four. So we're roughly talking about 12 and a half, uh, but I'm gonna round down because if I were to put this in the middle, I have this extra stuff on top, so 12 is probably a good um, pick for this. And I'm going to have 12% as the padding. Okay. Um, I think that's going to be everything except for the positioning. I missed something. What, oh, this needs to be auto not value so zero auto zero auto and again that's basically I want a top margin of no pixels and a bottom of no pixels but the right and left are going to be automatically adjusting according to the size of the screen so this is the right this is the left remember this works like a clock dial all right next for positioning I'm gonna make that relative so relative to the size of the of the of the window. All right, I'm going to click apply and that should jump this to the middle of the page. It also made the text into Verdana if it's available. And it, we have our instructions on the page. So I'm going to click okay and that's all of our styles. So let's go ahead and preview this page and see how it goes. It's going to ask me to save. I'm going to say yes. All right, so the regions of Ohio, below is the map of the regions of Ohio. Click on a region in the map to learn more about it. So let's test it. Will this go to another page? Yes, it does. All right, how about the dark green? The purple? The orange? The upper left orange? And the yellow? So there is all of our links, and they're going to the proper spots. So uh, if you have any questions on how to make this page or how to work the CSS so that it gets in the middle of the page, notice when I resize, just go ahead and ask me in class. be happy to help you.